Third person character and camera controllers are not easy to build from scratch in any game engine, and Game Builder Garage is no exception. There are no node on to handle it and no in-game tutorials for the mathematically challenged like myself. Luckily, I found a simpler way to get a fairly good working third person shooter camera, and that's what we're going to build today. We'll start with our person as we often do. I've upscaled it to where the X is 1.2 and I've turned off the visibility. Then we'll set up the movement like we would in any other tutorial. Left stick up and down, left right, control the character. You can also add the jump with the button press like you would normally. In this case, we'll use the A button. We're going to use a Y hinge connector to rotate the character body towards the camera. We'll change the person's turn speed to zero and we'll add in two cylinders. These will help create the base for our rotating character. The way we're gonna get that rotation and other rotations is using a head nodon and an angle sensor. The head nodon gets its position information from the origin point of the camera wherever it may be. Regardless of which camera nodon you use, you'll connect the y-axis value from the angle sensor into the y-hinge. The first cylinder will be set to movable with a connection point of x positive, x negative in a size of 0 0.4, 1 1.2, 0 0.4. The next cylinder will be the visible body, so we'll leave it as visible and solid with a connection point of x positive, x negative, but with a bigger size of x.6 and y1.6. Then we'll add in our basic camera node on that we're going to use and the controls like we usually do, where the right stick up and down, left, right, control the camera's rotation around the character. Instead of to the person, we're going to attach it to a very small box object. It's a size of 0.10 across all three axes and everything is turned off except for movable. With the camera, we'll change the tracking rates to 1 and we'll pull out the field of view to about an 85 with a Z offset of negative 2. We'll add a free slide connector and attach it to both that invisible cylinder and the small box. The only input that we'll feed it for now is a 0.25 on the X axis. That's going to make the camera offset to the right of the cylinder a little bit. That creates our basic third person over the shoulder view where the character, or in this case the cylinder, is always facing the camera position. Now we can move on to adding the gun or blaster. That's going to be another cylinder, which is set to only visible, but this time the connection point is going to be x negative, x positive. That way it'll be on the right side. And we'll change the size to x.2, y.8, z.2. We'll actually connect it to the body cylinder using an x hinge so we can rotate its position to face upwards or downwards. And just like the Y hinge, we'll drag the X rotation value from the angle sensor on the head. We'll want to give this cylinder an X axis rotation of 90 so it lines up. You can see that works pretty well. Now both the character and the weapon will be aimed towards the camera's facing position always. At this point, we can add our launch object and attach it to the end of the cylinder. You can change the color. The connection points will be Y negative, Y positive. The launch direction will be Y positive because it's out of the top of the cylinder, wherever it's facing. A launch speed of 100, a launch interval of 0 0.10, and a size of 0 0.2 across X, Y, and Z. Then we'll need a way to control the shooting. We can use a ZR button node on, attached to a 0.10 timer to match the speed settings on the launcher. You don't need the timer if you don't plan on attaching other things like sounds or effects, but I left it here so we can add them in. With only the few simple steps we've done so far, we've actually got a pretty good third person shooter controller set up already. We can change the launcher projectiles to zero gravity so that they act more like actual projectiles, and we can add in our world node on and set the environment to destructive. As far as the bare bones setup, that's it. Now we're going to move on to the things that you can use to make this method actually look and feel a lot better. We're going to work on adding an aiming reticle or an aiming point, and you'd also want to know how to do stuff like this if you wanted to add any HUD elements. The angle sensor will maintain that angle even if an object is attached, so now we'll just attach it to a box. 
the box should be set to movable only with a connection point of center Z positive. And we'll change the size so that it's a one on the Z axis. Then we'll attach a text object to the end of that box and a texture nodon attached to that text nodon object. I found that a lowercase v works well as the display text and we can change the size to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. We'll make it non-solid and invisible with a connection point of z negative z positive. When you make a text object invisible but add a plain texture on it, the text color that you choose in the settings will be the color of the text but it'll just be floating there. And that works fairly well. The reticle won't be as accurate at close ranges, but it will help, especially when we finish our next step, which is going to be to create better aiming. We're gonna add in the option for the player to aim down the sights or aim a little bit closer over the shoulder. The way we're gonna do this is create two sets of coordinates that the free slide connector can be placed into depending on certain circumstances. In this case, we're going to use the ZL button to zoom in or to aim down the sights. So what we're going to do is have three more constant nodons, which are going to hold an X, Y, and Z position of the zoomed in version of the view that we want. We'll set the button nodon to while pressed, and while the input is 1, these calculators will let our coordinates go through to the free slide connector. And then using a not nodon, we can have it so that when we're not pressing the aim down sights button, we'll send in our default or original coordinates. Based on your character model dimensions and how all of your camera systems are set up, you'll probably have different constant settings here than I do. I've set the Y value to a negative 0.25 so that it's looking a little bit lower and a Z value of one so that it's more forward on the player character. And with that done, this is starting to look a lot more like a traditional third person shooter where you can run around, jump, aim your weapon anywhere, and then zoom in when you want higher accuracy. As usual, I have a game ID where you can download a version of this to play on your own that is commented out and has some obstacles for you to play around with. If you wanted to take a deeper dive into third person and first person cameras, MJT Black Pixel has several game IDs available for templates and videos that go along with them. And JJ Studio also has some good videos if you're trying to learn more about how to use the camera node on in Game Builder Garage. So you should check them both out.